Hello and welcome to this week's Sunday Sermon. Um, if you see this right now, you're saying, hey, that doesn't look like the normal Sunday Sermon. No, it's not because uh, I'm in my office, um, not in the sanctuary, and we are currently doing church online only once again uh, due to the current status with the pandemic and our concern for uh, several of our members that are, are um, have compromised our high-risk um, immune systems, we are uh, choosing to, to meet this way. And also I want to tell you that if uh, you've seen some of our sermons in the past that were done this way, you say, well, this is a, maybe going to be a little bit different. And it is. Um, I, want to start, I want to start with a, a video that I want to show you that uh, spoke to me you know, we're in a difficult time. Um, Christmas is coming up, and and I expected to 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 be preaching in a in a sanctuary that was direct uh, decorated with Christmas things and and doing uh, Christmas uh, carols and things and 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 preach in, in that status. But uh, we can't right now. Uh, we're not, and so. Uh, but I did find something that kind of touched my heart and spoke to me, and so I want to uh, share that with you. Uh, by the way, some of the technical things, as you'll see, the lighting and, and my hand over the, <laughs> the lens or whatever. Uh, I'm, I'm, the, uh, I'm the technical director, and that's kind of scary. But bear with me and find the, the message in the music um, today. This is a video from uh, a group called The Five Strings, and uh, hope it blesses your heart like it blessed mine.
I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, like I said, it, it spoke to my heart a little bit this year in the midst of all that we're going through. And and uh, so I hope it, it touched your heart as well. And uh, this morning, we're going to begin uh, a series called uh, Advent Anticipation. Advent is just refers to the preparing and, and for and the, the coming of the Christ child, that uh, the process going on there. And uh, so the Advent anticipation is what we're talking about. And, uh, you know, it is typically people have spent so much time looking for, for a, a perfect gift and, and uh, finding just that right Christmas gift. Maybe this year is a little bit different for you as you've... Uh, if you're like me, we're, we're doing it online, right? And uh, the hunt's just a little bit different, uh, maybe. But but nonetheless, we're looking for a perfect gift. And uh, Isaiah was looking for for an important an important thing, an important promise from God, an important gift to deliver a Messiah to come. And so this morning, as we uh, we will begin looking in the book of Isaiah for for our message, you know, and, and we'll talk just a little bit about. It the book of Isaiah, found in the Old Testament, sometimes called the fifth gospel. We have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in the New Testament, and Isaiah um, is, is, so, is filled with such good news and so many things about the coming Messiah that uh, sometimes is referred to as the fifth gospel. And, you know, the book is, is overflowing with glory and good news, um, but it also has some gloom in it as well. And uh, summed up in I Isaiah chapter 60, verse 2, I'll read for you quickly. He says, See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the people. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. And, and maybe you have felt some of that gloom and that, that darkness. Um, it's felt like it's kind of been over, over you, over our nation, over our world for a while. But he says, but the Lord rises upon you and his glory appears over you. Uh, another thing about Isaiah, remember that the book of Isaiah was written 700 years before the time of Christ. And, and uh, a fact that, that should just put us in awe and wonder of, of the incredible detail and the specifics that Isaiah gives and all the prophecies made that are filled, fulfilled completely in the coming of Jesus Christ. And then uh, the book of Isaiah also contains, you know, some of the, the most beautiful language um, in, in Scripture. Christ quoted Isaiah on, on several different occasions. Uh, Isaiah is, is called one of the major prophets um, of the Old Testament uh, for, for two reasons. One is it, it, it is uh, the length of the book. It, uh, the, it is uh, one of the longest uh, books. And the second is that the message um, is, is of such intensity and carries um, such great importance here that it would be a major prophet. And then uh, another great parallel with Isaiah and the Bible is that the book of Isaiah itself has 66 chapters. Well, there are 66 books in the Bible. And uh, interesting that, that the first 39 chapters of Isaiah correspond to uh, the law of the Old Testament. And the final 27 chapters of Isaiah correspond to the, the liberty um, that, that is taught uh, for the believer in, in the New Testament. And there are so many great themes and, and great things in the book of Isaiah, but I just want to mention three of them today. And uh, the first one is God is in control. Uh, you know, like God has not been caught off guard by by a pandemic or in the year 2020 and uh, and uh, the crazy election cycle and all the other stuff that's gone on. God is not, um, you know, biting his fingernails and pacing back and forth. Along God. God is still in control. His plan is still moving forward from from beginning to end. His promise and God is still in control. The second thing is that the Messiah is coming. And when when uh, Isaiah wrote this, it was a promise of the first coming of the Messiah, the first coming of Christ. And now we wait for um, his return in that. And so God is still in control. Um, and and we again await uh, the coming, uh, second coming of our Messiah. And then uh, God is always 
has a remnant that stays committed to him. That's the third theme. God always has a remnant that stays committed to him. And, and that's what we are called to do is stay committed to him. Even when the circumstance around us seems crazy and there's, uh, there's doubt and fear around us, that we are to be focused upon, um, upon the Lord in that. Uh, another thing to remember about the book of Isaiah is that Isaiah's name literally means Jehovah, Jehovah saves. And uh, he, um, Isaiah was, was uh, prophesying in a very difficult uh, time in, in the nation Israel. There had been uh, the division from the, of the 12 tribes that were to now there were the 10 northern tribes referred to as Israel and the two southern tribes as Judah. And Isaiah was prophesying in a 50 year period over the, over the time of four kings. And, and he, uh, he was prophesying when there were some bad guys <laughs> that were king in Israel. Um, and, and the book of Isaiah begins with, uh, with an a com opening complaint in, in chapter 1 and verse 4. And I want to share that with you and, and see if that resonates at all with where, where we might be at. Isaiah says, Woe to the sinful nation, a people whose guilt is great, a brood of evildoers, children given to corruption. They have forsaken the Lord. They have spurned the Holy One of Israel and turned their backs on Him. And uh, I don't know about you, but a lot of those words seem to ring true right now and in, in our, our current times. And yet, in spite of that, the, the situation that Israel was in and the situation that we're in right now, you know, the book in, in, in his message, Isaiah, continues to offer words of hope throughout Israel the entire book and and that's what i want to offer to you today is there's words of hope for us um isaiah dared to believe that something better was coming even though the, the culture was corrupt and everything around him seemed seemed dark and gloomy and isaiah's message is one of hope um isaiah 64 1 he says he, he's, he's crying out to the Lord that somehow the Lord would come down and intervene. And he says, oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains would tremble before you. And uh, there's that hope and uh, that, it, that is, is always there for us in the Lord. And so today I want to look at kind of quickly at four different passages in Isaiah and uh, kind of get a composite picture maybe of what Christmas is all about in, in, in the mind of Isaiah. And the first thing that... Uh, I want to talk about is a sure sign, a uh, an unmistakable sign, a sure sign, uh, the sign of of the of Emmanuel, and and in Isaiah seven uh, verses one through th three, we we get a story of where the king Ahaz is on the throne, and Ahaz was a bad guy, evil king, and he deliberately disobeyed God, uh, and and as a result, the uh, that kingdom had come under attack from from a variety of enemies and they were they were coming um, upon him and it, and it says in verse 2 so the hearts of Ahaz and the people were shaken as the trees of the forest are shaken by the wind and you know um, in in difficult times when when uh, crazy things are going on and people don't know the Lord and when troubles coming they they're shaken and shaken to their very core and uh, and and uh, we see that with Isaiah here. Instead of turning to the Lord, he begins to try to come up with a plan of his own. And he tries to partner with, with uh, uh, pagan nations around him. And, and, and he wants to partner with Assyria um, to pr find protection instead of seeking the Lord for protection. And that's what we, we find at the beginning of, of chapter 7. And Isaiah comes in to him in verse 9 of, of chapter 7, and he says, If you don't stand firm in your faith, you will not stand at all. And uh, what a great uh, reminder to us. If we don't start, stand firm in our faith, we don't stand at all. In verse 10, we read that, that uh, Isaiah's message from the Lord was, The Lord said, said Ahaz, ask for a sign. Yeah, to know that I'm with you, to know that I w can protect Israel and, and, you know, that I'm true to my word, ask for a sign. Ask me for something and, I, and I'll, I'll show you. And Ahaz refused to ask for a sign. And he says, well, I'm not going to test the Lord. But, but in this particular instance, the Lord had come to him and said, ask for a sign. 
and he refused to ask for a sign. And so Ahaz's disobedience brings a, brings forth a proclamation that we get from Isaiah when he, he says, Hear now, you house of David, is it not enough to try the patience of my God also? Oh, I'm, I misread that. Let me start again. Then verse 13, Then Isaiah said, Hear now, you house of David, it is not enough to try the patience of men. Will you now try the patience of my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. And uh, what an incredible deal. He says, Isaiah says, Look, the Lord told you to ask for some kind of sign to know that he was with you and you refused. And so I'll tell you what, the Lord is going to give you a sign. And... Uh, and he, he proclaims that the virgin, that there will be a virgin who will be with child and, and, she, and uh, that she will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Uh, the Lord himself will give that sign. You know, that's similar to, to what Abraham said in Genesis 22, 8, when, when uh, he took Isaac and, and they were looking for a sacrifice. And Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering. And uh, the two of them went on together, and, and uh, God himself will provide the lamb. The sign was given to us, and, and it says it will be given to you. And it's a, the passage is a plural pronoun that, that indicates it wasn't just a sign to Ahab. It was a sign to everyone that that uh, same thing that that angel made clear in Luke chapter 2, verse 10. It says, But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. And uh, the sign um, will be a son born to a virgin. Uh, in the Hebrew, it's a grammatical interjection. It says, Behold, the virgin will be with child. And uh, very dramatic in that. Get to your attention. Hey, whoa, listen to this. Listen to what I'm saying. Behold, a virgin will, behold, will, will bear a child, will be with child. Um, a virgin with child and will give birth to a son. Uh, what, a, what a miraculous sign. You want a sign? You want a sign? Yeah. God says, here, here's a sign. The, the son would be God incarnate. The name Emmanuel means God with us, literally, literally the, uh, the strong God with us. And while Emmanuel was not Jesus' proper name, Emmanuel is who he is, God with us. And from that point uh, of this miraculous birth, though, and God himself would be present among his people. Uh, it's quoted in Matthew chapter 1, verses 22 and 23, it says, all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Did Ahaz understand all of that? <laughs> no. Was it fulfilled during his lifetime? No. But it was a prophecy focusing on the future given to all the people so that God could be with all people for all time. A, a sure sign, an unmistakable sign was given that we would know that this, this child was from the Lord. And it should, the next thing to look at, it says, a, son, a sent son. And Isaiah, turn over into chapter 9, Isaiah, first, first four verses of chapter 9, says, Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom, huh? For those who were in distress. In the past, he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, but in the future, he will honor Galilee of the Gentiles by the way of the sea along the Jordan. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light on those living in the land of the shadow of death. A light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increase their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as men rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdened them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. And so quickly put this text in context here. The original birth announcement was made in the midst of, of grief and gloom by Isaiah. We, we saw that. And, and for many years, the people in this region knew only grief because of the onslaught of their, their enemies um, uh, that, that was coming after them as judgment for their, for their sin. 
But Isaiah tells us a time in the future where gloom will be replaced with gladness in Galilee. Excuse me. Don't miss the fact that Isaiah says in Galilee. That, that was the ground where, where Jesus lived. <coughs> Excuse me. I knew that was coming. Sorry. And uh, uh, don't miss the fact that the ministry of Jesus was on that ground of Galilee, and Isaiah prophesied that 700 years before that. And, uh, you know, Christmas, it, Christmas itself, the coming of the Christ child, uh, was birthed in the midst of great grief. While the angels were proclaiming peace on earth, there was a guy named Herod that was king, and he was preparing to annihilate infants. And while Mary was worshiping, there were other Mary, there were other mothers that were weeping for their children. Remember Jeremiah 31, 15, what the Lord says, A voice is heard in Ramah mourning and great weeping, Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because they were no more. And Matthew 2, 18 quotes that same verse again. Christmas, the coming of the Christ child, happened in a time of the period of, in the history of Israel when there was destruction and gloom and worry and, and a lot of things going on. Christmas joy is best understood with the frustrations and struggle in life all around us. And that's because the, that, that gladness comes while we're grieving, that gladness comes, that hope comes while we are in distress. And what a great message for, for us today. Um, is, that, is that what you're at today? Uh, we talked about the things in our, in our world, in our nation right now that can create some distress and some grief. And, and maybe in your own world, is that where you're at? Maybe even in your personal life, on the top of the circumstances around us, is there some distress and grief and hurt? And, and you know... If there is, that's okay, because that is exactly where Emmanuel will meet you. God with us has come to be with us, and he'll meet you right where you are today. Verse 2 verse two of, of chapter 9 describes how the birth of Christ will bring brightness to a dark world. It shows the impact that Christ makes on a, a dark world. And, refer, uh, and referring to himself in, in John uh, chapter 8 and verse 12, Christ says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have light, have the light of life. Isaiah prophesied that then in, in uh, verse 4 uh, that we just read of chapter 9. For this is the day of Midian's defeat. You have shattered the yoke that burdens them and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressors. What did Christ say about, about that yoke and that, and that rod? He says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Christ comes to deliver his people. Uh, God with us. That's the promise that is made to us. Um, verse 6 of Isaiah, one of the, one of the uh, most most famous verses probably you know it says for to us a child is born to us a son is given and the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called wonderful counselor mighty god everlasting father prince of peace and and what a what a great great promise that that is for us unto us is born okay for for unto us a son is is given and uh what an, an incredible incredible promise for us right now. The child was birthed in Bethlehem and he's the gift of the, um, he, of, he is the eternal son of the eternal God that has given us. And it goes on to say that the government will be upon his shoulders. And this means the, the expectations of the king, of the throne of King David are fulfilled in, in Christ. That baby bundled the straw, hold, that, that baby that, that is bundled in the straw was the same, same one that was holding the universe together. The government will be upon his shoulders. He's redeemer and ruler of all. Sometimes at Christmas, people get so focused on that on that little baby Jesus, and and uh, but but as we look at these titles that are given in this verse, it reminds us of who Christ is: Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. He is he is the the profound, powerful, personal, and peaceful master of, of, of uh, the universe. And he is, he is the one that is given unto us. 
it is amazing to me that, that I, Isaiah not only knew that Emmanuel would be born to a virgin as a, a sure sign, but he also understood that he would be the sent Son of God. We're reminded of what Gabriel said to Mary in Luke uh, chapter 1 and verse 32. Um, he said he will, be, he will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And so we see that sure sign and a sent sign. And then the third thing we see, a shoot from the stump. Flip one over a page or two in your Bible to Isaiah chapter 11. Take a look at the first two verses. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of power, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Isaiah, in Isaiah's day, it felt hopeless because it, it seemed like that, uh, I mean, Israel was getting wiped out. The only thing left there were stumps, you know, um, and uh, the northern kingdom had been destroyed and things were looking bleak for the south and and uh, maybe you feel like that in your world, that, that one thing after another is getting wiped out or the things that you're looking at and um, it, it going on in our world. And, and you see that you say, man, this, if this keeps happening, there's going to be nothing left. So many things are, are being taken away. But, but the promise here to, to the people was that a shoot will come from the stump. Jesse is the father of King David, right? And it's through his line, we know that the prophecy was that it would be through his line, the line of David, that the Savior of the world would come. Luke uh, chapter 2 verse 4 says, So Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. Jesus is described in Revelation 5.5. It says, Then one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. See the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and its seven seals. So Isaiah is not only able to catch a vision of the Savior as, as this, this shoot, the one that will rise up from this stump. Um, in, in this process, he also sees, um, he can see into the future of the time when when peace will prevail, and, and he pre previewing the angel's proclamation to the shepherds that glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. So, so when Christ came the first time, he ushered in a time of inner peace, that, that we could have peace in our hearts if we receive Christ as Savior, that he would bring that inner peace for those that would believe in him. And, and when he comes a second time, he will usher in a time of external and in internal peace for those who know him. And so I want to flip one over now in, in chapter 11. We'll drop on down to verse 6 through 9. This this time of, of peace and a, and a conquering king that is promised in this. It says in verse 6, The wolf will live with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the goat. The calf and the lion and the yearling together and a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear, the young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the hole of the cobra, and the young child put his hand in the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. What an incredible picture of peace that and comfort that Isaiah gives to, to the people of Israel that were going through that gloom and, and difficult time. What, a, what an incredible message that was as a reminder at the time that Christ was born 2,000 years ago that in the strife that was going on with King Herod and, and Rome and all the different things going on in the life that, that there would be a, a coming time of this peace. And what an incredible message to us that in a world that seems to have gone crazy at times and, and, and corruption filled and, and, and so much evil, that there's a time of peace promised to us that is, that is yet to come. And so Isaiah gives us this sure sign. He points to a sent son and, and he ties the Messiah to, to David's throne as, as a shoot from the stump. And then finally, we see Christ 
as a suffering Savior. And you need to flip over a few more pages, Isaiah chapter 53. Jesus came at Christmas so that by suffering and, and ultimately sacrificing himself as our substitute, we can be saved from our sins. That's the purpose that they stated from the very beginning of the uh, the Timothy count back in, in Matthew 1, 21. Matthew says, She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. And that's the angel speaking. And, and it says, She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. There's an amazing amount of, of pinpoint prophecies all throughout Isaiah, and especially here in Isaiah 53 that describe the substitutionary, substitutionary atonement. Say that again, substitutionary atonement of Christ on the cross. But I just want to look at, at three verses here. And um, so I don't... Um, think, think, of, think with me about what Jesus bought for us and, and not on the Black Friday sale, what Jesus bought for us on Good Friday. And that sacrifice that was made. And we see that in Isaiah 53, verses 3 to 5. He says, He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering, like one from whom men hide their faces. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he took upon our, took up our infirmities and carried our sorrow, yet we consider him stricken by God, smitten by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, we are healed. What an incredible couple of verses. And again, this was written 700 years before Christ was born. And, it's, and it, it lays out the, the sacrifice that Christ made uh, upon the cross along the way. Jesus was rejected by the very world that he came to save. He delivered a salvation by grace, free to all that would receive him as Lord. He took upon himself the judgment to each of us, and he paid the penalty for our sins. You know, you, you read this, this prophecy of Isaiah 700 years before Christ is is even born on this earth and and it is amazing to think about I wonder what Isaiah knew about Emmanuel about God with us centuries before Christmas ever happened right and yet the prophecies are so specific Jesus is a sure sign an unmistakable sign that that child born to a virgin he is a sent son. We see that, that he, he was sent to, to deliver his, a people. He is a shoot from the stump of David, that, he, that, uh, that, uh, that, that root of Jesse that, that comes up. He, he is the one that pro was prophesied to set upon the throne of David, and he is, he is our suffering Savior that, that gave himself for us. Isaiah wrote about the future, but his words seemed to indicate that he saw somehow the Savior with his own eyes in, in all of this. In John 12, verse 41, uh, John says, Isaiah, Isaiah said this because he saw Jesus' glory and spoke about him. I wonder in the vision that Isaiah was given in this, um, what all he saw, what an incredible thing. You know, Jesus came not only to be born into this world, but he came to be born in us you know it uh, this is the one gift that you can you, you can never get too soon so my question is are you ready to receive the christ of christmas isaiah's promises about christ give us hope and when they're fulfilled in us they bring peace but like a present jesus must be received i can buy you a present and I can have it here, but if you never, if I, if you never receive it, I can, I can reach out with it and hold it waiting for you. But if you never receive that gift, it does you no good. Jesus Christ is that perfect gift. He offers salvation for each of us. And 
But we have to receive that gift. We have to receive that gift. Isaiah in chapter 65, verses 1 and 2, and, and the question is raised to the Lord about, about uh, what was going on in all of this. And, and he says, I revealed myself, the Lord speaking, I revealed myself to those who did not ask for me. I was found by those who did not seek me. To a nation that did not call on my name, I said, here I am, here I am. All day long I have held out my hands to an obstinate people who walk in ways not good, pursuing their own imaginations. We live, we have lived through a very unique, difficult, unsettling year. Right now, and we enter this Christmas season with an unsettled election, an unsettled pandemic that appears to, that maybe it's going to continue to be a problem for a while yet. But you know, God knows what you're struggling with right now. God knows what you're worried about. God knows what you're afraid of. And God also knows that you're listening to me right now. He sent his word to you right now about the gift that he sent for you. His greatest desire is that, that you would stop rejecting him right now and receive Christ as Lord and Savior. Receive that very best gift. Re receive the free gift of salvation today. Don't, don't miss the meaning behind Christmas this year. Christ is our great hope for peace, love, joy, for salvation in a lost and dying world. I pray that you make today the day of your salvation. If, if you have questions about what it means to be a Christian, what it means to receive Christ, then, then contact me through, through our website, the email. There's a contact us there. It'll come straight to me. And, and, or, or reach out to me somehow that, that we can get together. Uh, and and uh, if you're not near here, that's okay. We can do it by, by phone and or, or so many other ways. But if God has, has touched your heart with this message, make today the day of your salvation. Receive the best gift this season, this Christmas. That's my prayer for you. It's in the name of Jesus that I, that I, I say this and pray this. God bless you.